Hi everybody! Today I will show you how to get started with the control net and how I achieved the following results. And since I didn't have a GPU myself, I used a Colab notebook to run the control net. And yeah, for this, let's just immediately hop into the Colab notebook. Okay, to run the user interface of the control net, I used this Colab notebook. I didn't write it myself. It's from Kamandura, so many thanks for sharing it with us. And I will link it in the description section of this video, so you can also open it. And the only thing we have to do in this Colab notebook is just run the cell. And Google will ask you if it's safe. <laughs> From my perspective, yeah, you can just run it. And this will, this type will take a little bit. So uh, maybe grab a coffee. And once this is done, we can just open the user interface and start editing our images using the control net. Okay, downloading the model weights was successful. Everything worked and now we can access our user interface using this public link just by clicking on it and we will see the user interface of the controlled stable diffusion with Kenny Edge maps and as you can see we have multiple options to control the diffusion process one way would be uh, to use Kenny Edge maps but we also have like half half maps or like yeah applying a half transformation first as a guidance as well uh, you can see all of them here but I will just show you right now how I started using it. I just took a picture, which was this one, and dragged and dropped it in this box. And the control net also has something that is called guess mode or non-prompt mode, which is we don't type in any prompt. It's basically promptless, if you want to call it. And then I will try this first. And in the advanced options, we can see the image resolution. Also, we can alter the Kenny low threshold and high threshold. I definitely recommend you guys um, exploring those a little bit. And for each input image, I use different thresholds because um, yeah, every image is a little bit different. I highly recommend you also trying to alter those two values. And then you can also adjust the steps of the diffusion or denoising process. I mostly worked with 20. Usually if you do more steps, the quality of the results will be even better. But I was already pretty happy with 20. Okay, and here you can see our result with this input image and the Kenny Edge map as a guidance or like as a additional con condition in the control net. We got this result and I think it's pretty awesome. Wow, that's, uh, that looks amazing. And yeah, we didn't even add a single prompt. Now I might just add something like blue colored eyes and let's see how this looks like and this is our result with a blue colored eyes prompt that we added yeah and as you can see here and also in the image before like the the overall structure of the image is very much sustained so by using the Kenny edge map all the shapes and contours edges are still uh, in our final result so if we compare those two images they're very identical especially if I show it now and I really like this one. It looks really beautiful. I don't want to show you all of them because then the video would get very long. But I think the paper is very helpful to figure out in which circumstances, which additional guidance or source of information, for example, a Kenny Edge or like Huff, w would be helpful in which kind of scenario. Yeah, so for example, this one, we have all the time the same prompt and we have always the same configuration for generating the image. This is our source image and now we can see that for the Kenny Edge detector we have this result and then we will get those images while with the MIDRS, I'm not sure if I pronounce it correctly, as a depth estimation we have this input and I feel like this gives the model more creativity while this is very bound to the Kenny Edge because it's so high detailed while this has less details and leaves more creativity how to fill this map in the image. So I think it depends a little bit on if you want your final result image to be very similar to your input image, or if you want to have it loosely bound to your input image, then maybe something like the MIDRS uh, depth estimator would be more helpful or better in your scenario. And all those different conditional inputs you can select here. So in the background, then the specific model will be loaded for this. So if you, we basically change to half and run this for the first time in the background, it will load the model. So the first time it will take a little bit longer. But yeah, that's it for today's video. 
it's just a brief introduction on how to quickly get started with a control net. I think it really allows you to generate awesome images so easily. So I just wanted to show you how I got there because I had to look up a little bit to find the Colab notebook and get everything running. And yeah, I hope it was helpful. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate if you subscribe to my channel. Have a nice day and see you soon. Bye bye.